What is going on, everybody? Are you guys ready to rock? We are here for you tonight. <laughs> so we got the amazing... He's one of my personal friends as well, guys. But we got the lead singer of a band called... Friends as well, guys. And so this ends. Amazing Ben Taft. What's going on, buddy? How you doing? <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> Give you a big intro there. Awesome, man. I'm so yeah. excited to have you on. Uh and as cool as cool as it always is james what's going on buddy pretty good thanks for uh yeah thanks for uh coming in and uh, joining us in the tasty licks episode He's oh i think it's two episode two <laughs> episode <laughs> two of tasty two. Licks. and tasty licks. Yeah. <laughs> that's right <laughs> so, Rob. and we got the yeah so we're of course, so happy to have a very, very talented uh, artist with us today. And if you guys didn't already know Ben was a musician, now you'll know because we're going to play one of his EPs coming up here in a bit in the hour. And we're going to get to the bottom of his band and as, as well as himself as a musician. So uh, how's it going, man? How's it going? You're good? Yeah. Yeah, yeah good. Good. Okay. It's, it's it's funny because I, I guess this entire time I've been doing the beard stuff and being in the beard community, uh, it didn't occur to me <laughs> that people didn't know this about me. But then again, nope. when I started in it, uh, the band hadn't gotten back together yet. I mean, this just happened within the past year. So it was like, oh, all right. So I guess I'll let the cat out of the bag sooner or later. <laughs> <laughs> which is totally cool i mean when we first I, I first saw that you were doing this and we've talked because we're both yeah. metalheads and so we i was like wow he's really cool and i you know you said oh well, i've done this in the past you hadn't really yeah. gone there yet and then and you knew a lot about metal of course a lot about music and you were saying i was the lead screamer and he was telling me more about how you were doing it and how you know you were very good at it because i was like impressed as hell because i was like because there's a lot of people who scream and then they lose their voice and he's like i don't do that i, I have no. i'm professional at this so i was <laughs> like oh dude that's, that's awesome you you have that conversation with people that don't realize all right that the you know a vocal vocal box vocal cords are a musical instrument and despite you you know my boss for instance he's just like oh that's screaming yeah, that, that. i was like go ahead enjoy enjoy do a three and a half minute song pause just for a little bit do another one i said it <laughs> without losing your voice i said you know how many times i almost blacked out way you know back in my early 20s trying to you know tune your voice to be able to do stuff like that it's it's there's an art to it is it for everybody right. no it's not for everybody but there's an art to it the, without losing your voice is it's hard <laughs> Yeah, there's actually a scream too. like there's scream like metal like i forgot the girl's name but she's like actually one of the first like professional like scream coaches where she can actually yeah. teach you how to scream properly without it's, it's, messing up your vocal cords it, it it's a it's a diaphragm thing you you know a lot of people just do the the vocal cord thing and that, yeah. that's vocal fry and you yeah. will damage your vocal cords but if you push from your diaphragm you can change just you know, you, you control yeah. the air with your throat, so it, it, it comes out in different pitches and stuff. So yeah, it's a it's a totally it's a it's a it's a skill. I don't know it's a skill that everybody wants to learn, but you know <laughs> hey, so, thing it just comes out of your mouth. I guess instead you just say yeah, like you said, use your diaphragm to push it out instead of just using your yep. your throat, you kind of just use your yep diaphragm. Absolutely. Which is why I knew he was talented because my mom's a vocal coach. She's a right. vocal teacher. Yeah. So I was like, yep, yep, yep. You're absolutely right. So half of the problems, and, and actually if you talk to a lot of rock musicians over time, after especially touring for a while, they have to get injections into their neck. The parts that they don't tell you about as a musician and touring yeah. is that they'll have to actually get vocal injections into their neck because it will actually somewhat freeze up freeze up oh, on yeah. them and they have to keep it from freezing up and going numb clean clean yeah. sing, clean singing actually hurts my vocal cords more than screaming does which is odd you wouldn't think that to be but to, to huh. hold a certain a pitch or a tone which I'm, I'm not the greatest singer uh you know that's why there's grit in there that's why the raspy comes through but uh the yeah if i try and sing sing for uh, you know say in the car to somebody else's song it hurts my vote my voice to where screaming just doesn't bother me after so many years. So <laughs> it's, it's so very odd. sad. 
So let's get to the bottom of what even got you in. I mean, just like, how do you get into this to where you're like, hey, uh, this is what I'm going to do? So well, tell me uh, a little bit about your story, your backstory. Yeah. Uh, I was talking, my bassist is, uh, he's one of my, my two, uh, I say best friends. Of course, my wife is my best friend. She will let you know, you know, <laughs> but <laughs> my two <laughs> oldest friends, uh, one is in Florida. He's in Ocala. That's just my, my friend, Jamie. And, uh, my friend Doug is a bass player. And, uh, we, we all three became best friends when I was 13. So it's been over 30 years. Doug has played bass for as long as I've known him, just, you know, to, one degree or another, just in his room. And then somewhere in high school, we did the cover band thing. And uh, I replaced Jamie briefly uh, before the band broke up as lead singer in there doing Metallica, ACDC, stuff like that. Well, that was the first little taste. Uh, Doug went over to Germany. Uh, what is it? A pastry chef. I think he was, he went to Germany to become a pastry chef and uh -huh. got his yeah, it got that degree or whatever. And when he came back, it was 1998. And we sat right out in this back back uh, yard and talked about, hey, why don't we try and start a band? We need to find a drummer and, you know, you can, you know, I'll do vocals and he'll do bass. We'll find a guitar player. And that's actually where we met our current drummer, Matt. Um, we, we put out a, a penny saver ad and put it in. He answered. So we went yeah. up there. And we're into corn, we're into deftones, we're all in the same music at that point in time. So it kind of, he was in a band already, but he, they were doing cover stuff, you know, like bar band type stuff. And uh, he wanted to do the heavier stuff. And we're like, yeah, we're, we're game, man. <laughs> so right uh, I don't know. It just, there was different iterations of it. Matt didn't stay the drummer. We uh, played around two or three different drummers. We kind of bounced around. We used to play up in the loft in my barn when I lived in the country. Uh, we rented a place in another adjacent town briefly. Uh, we changed drummers again, and then different guitars kind of came and came and went. And uh, and so this end started. I think we last night we nailed down uh, 2002 is when the name stuck, and we were playing in the basement of Doug's house. And we had an, yet another guitar player, but Matt came back into the fold. Matt became our drummer again. And then we wrote, uh, I think we did three songs. We did a demo, three songs. And uh, we played a couple shows. And it was just, it was, a you know, Rochester music is the new metal scene. It, 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 we, we had aspirations of going up there and playing and being one of those bands. But being from a small town, it was difficult. So, right. and, and honing your craft so you didn't you know you don't want to embarrass yourself those guys that they, they eat live and breathe music up there that i mean it's crazy and you want to go up and not not embarrass yourself you want to yeah. do a good job so we we got to play a couple shows uh with that scott and then that kind of i went up and i i was briefly in a rochester band uh with a friend mike of mine uh, uh mike that was called november gray that was I really enjoyed the music we made. It just, it was unsustainable with me being down here and them being up there. It's an hour drive and it just wasn't happening. Came back down to Dansville. We met Sean, which is a, a, our current guitar player and Matt and Doug. And then we were up in Sean's house in his basement <laughs> and continued. We just, we didn't want to change the name of and so this end. So we kept it and there's my cat. I told you, I told you in the pre-screen, she was trying to get on the hat. <laughs> um, that was, you know, we wrote some really good songs. Uh, Spin, which is on our Facebook page, that was recorded around that time. We had written a whole bunch of songs, which we have since forgotten, which is, it's kind of funny. Um, one of the songs we we just recorded, I don't think sounds anything like it used to. Of course, none of us can remember how it used to sound, so we just rewrote <laughs> it. <laughs> um, but that, yeah, that was 12 years ago. We, And I, I don't think we... We parted on, on on good terms and everything. It was just, I think Doug was tired. I was tired of the whole band thing. You know, at that point in time, I think Doug and I had been in bands, you know, 10 plus years. And it was just, it, it's not that it wasn't going anywhere, but you get older, life gets in the way, you know, work, right. kids, everything else. And it was just, it was time for a pause. Um, and that happened. And then just right out of the blue, Doug had kind of bounced around different jobs. He, he lived out of state for a little bit. And finally he came back to Dansville and he was just like, dude, what do you think about getting the band back together? I'm like, can we do it for fun? Cause 
when you're younger, you're chasing uh, the getting signed thing. You know, oh, we're gonna we're gonna play Rochester. We're gonna we're gonna become Lincoln Park. We're gonna you know, right? It, it, there's pressure and it, it, it causes issues in the band. You know, that you already have personalities conflicting. You know, creative process and this and that. But it, it just adds a pressure to. It was just like let's, right. this time, let's do it for fun. If we never play right. a show out, I'm fine. If we never record, which we ended up recording, because we were like, dude, this sounds good. Let's <laughs> right. Uh, right. But the pressure still isn't there. It's for fun. Every Wednesday we practice, and it, it's it's just the guys hanging out and doing what we love, and that's it, it's you know it's been a passion of mine for so long. I just you, you, as you get older, you take all the the pressure out of it and make it fun, and then it is fun. It's like yeah, dude, you go record, hang out, and now we I don't know. Yeah, I like what we. Nice yeah, we've That's been a jam session without anything tied to it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, That's, and, and I think that again with the Rochester scene, like the you know you're you're expected to do like a half an hour set, which we have. I, I think that you know if we we practice and get it down tight enough that the, our songs are good, we just we would need to you know make sure we're good for that uh, that bit. I think we'd be good, but obviously we can't right now. <laughs> uh, right, right. You know, when things open up. Possibly, you know, it's, I have some connections up in the city. We can kind of, you know, branch out and do that, but it's, it's just, I, I don't want to push it. If it happens, great. If it doesn't happen, I'm all right with that. Ooh, did he bring you snacks? He did. Oh. <laughs> 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 so oh, what, um, so like what brought you to, um, to do vocals? Like, did you, do you, I mean, do you know how to do instruments as well? Like play guitar no. and all that stuff? No, or, it's you know, what made you decide to just like, I want to do vocals, like or that you could do vocals. It is uh it's it's hilarious me sitting in band practice because I'm curious. I'm like, oh, what tuner are we in? You know, oh drop D. That's great. I have no idea what that means. It's <laughs> uh, at one point in time though, and so this ends when we're in Doug's basement, I think we're drop A, which is just I mean corn, just glug, 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 just sloppy. It was it was disgustingly delicious. I loved it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> drop, drop D is, you know, uh, is, is good too. It's nice and chunky the way I like it. But uh, it, yeah, uh, I don't know what, the, a long, long time ago in high school, my friend had a bass too and we we're down in his basement and he had a, just a crap mic and he was just like, oh, he was playing something and I was screaming into it just for fun. He was just like, dude, you're pretty loud. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> and then it, I don't know. I I don't know if I ever fancied myself a, a lead singer because I'm not the most outgoing person. I'm not afraid of being in public. I'm not afraid of standing in front of people. But it's not you know if I if I have a choice, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> no right. doubt, no doubt. Yeah. It's a uh, well with the whole beard thing. It was just like oh Ben's in a band. I'm like all right, let's let's calm down with that stuff. You know, <laughs> you're, you're embarrassing me. Stop. <laughs> this is what's so funny. And this is why I like highlighting. I mean, you are you're freaking talented. And we'll see this in about about 10, 15 minutes. We're going to play one of his songs and you will see this. Um, I, and I know that you you're humble. You are humble beyond <laughs> belief. You're the most humble lead I've ever met. Because you're definitely, but but the cool thing about it is, is that you really are talented, which I appreciate, I think maybe in time over the years, we're older, you know, we're yeah. in our forties. So maybe that humility, that humbleness, I think to me, it is endearing. It's something yeah. that goes, Hey, I know what I got. I don't have yeah. to tell you about it. You're just going right, to hear right. it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, it was, what it, it was kind of weird when everybody's just like, Oh, I don't hear it from me. You know, I, I shared, you know, a song or two with, with some buddies and uh, they're like, Oh, I can't see. You. I was like, all right, fine. I'll record myself at practice. So you, this is proof. I actually do this stuff. When I first heard it, when I first saw that, I was like, what? I was oh, blown away. Man, I was like, I had no idea. Like, I'm pretty sure yeah. nobody else knew as well. I mean, a lot of people probably didn't know as well, but yeah. we were, uh, yeah, I was wrong. I shared it. And, you know, just like a couple buddies and I was like, all right, here's this. And I was like, I was kind of agonized over it. Like, I don't get, I, I don't anxiety per se, but I do get this kind of like, Ooh, what are you doing, dude? So I was like, all right. And my wife was asking me, she's like, what are you thinking of doing? I'm like, I'm going to post this on my IG. She's just like, okay. I'm like, huh? <laughs> 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 lots of people are going to see it. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's, <laughs> yeah. I'm not afraid. It's just, I, I don't know. I, I'm not afraid of rejection or somebody to say, Hey, that's, you know, screaming what's the big deal or anything. It's, it's just a, it's a confidence thing that, that, you know, I'm always keeping myself in check. Like, Hey, don't ever get full of yourself because this is, you're, I'll knock myself down before anybody else can type of thing. I guess. Right. <laughs> well, I will tell you this, that is part of, you know, a close crew of yours. Um, we want, we will help hype you up because that's what we're all about. <laughs> we'll tell, we'll tell everybody about you, which we are. I mean, I got you on my show. Cause I'm just like, he is that freaking talented with the amount of rock folks we're going to have on this show. You are just as freaking talented, dude. I mean, mm -hmm. I am blown away. And the fact that you had that musical understanding, being able to use your diaphragm, I, that's, yeah. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times my mom sat kids in a living room saying, Breathe through your diaphragm, sing through your, yeah. not through your nose, not yep. through your, not through your throat, through your diaphragm, through your, it's not something that everybody gets. And it's yeah. really right. hard for, to teach somebody how to breathe from that place, because that's the only way to keep your vocals fresh and working yeah. throughout. Cause you can, you'll notice that if you go to a karaoke bar, there's people that can sing really well mm -hmm. and they're using their throat. And then there's the person that gets in there and you're like, the karaoke queen comes in yeah. and it's oh, yeah, all right. it's all coming from the diaphragm because they know how to use their vocals cords yes. and their diaphragm to be able to project and it's yep. projection that makes the big deal yep. which is what you found apparently early without even knowing about it yeah that's it, it, which is weird it's it's uh i it, there was a long time ago and and what during the the, the hiatus there uh, my drummer, uh, another good friend, was playing bass. Uh, my, my current guitarist, they had a, a band, and they had a girl singer, and their name was Mandy, and she was a phenomenal singer, but she was uh, she sang from the throat. So she was like, oh, I think I have to get a new PA because it's not – well, it was a PA I had been using. Well, I hadn't touched the settings, and we did, I think, as Hey Man, Nice Shot or something. I just got up there screamed that, and I was just like, nope, it's, you got to – it's you. Sure. You got to – you know, like, she can <laughs> sing <laughs> She can sing 1,000 times better than I can sing, sing, but she doesn't project, you know, well enough. And I was, I was trying to convey to her like, Hey, just don't be afraid. Just pa, just let her fly, right. man. You know? <laughs> right. Right. Absolutely. And it's also for longevity. It's actually good for you. Yeah. Like, like you're saying, yeah. you won't have the vocal cramps and you'll yeah. not be able to scar. You're actually, when you sing from your vocal, from your throat, you will scar your vocal cords. And you're yeah. vibrating your, your core, and you're vi like vibrating so right. much, you're like, you're like rupturing right. them, I guess you can kind of say. Right, you can rupture, exactly, it scars yeah. them. And then, and then you lose the ability to sing because you've done that. And there's, um, there's a couple really good singers that that's what happened to them, and they went, they're gone. They're no longer, there's a couple country singers I can think of for sure, that they started, they sung through their throat and then they're gone. Their vocal, their, their entire career yep. ended after just a few years because they didn't sing properly. They weren't using the, you know, the pr proper way of singing. So, so you got into this band. What now you told me a story about, uh, you know, what really got you, you were talking about, I just kind of like, Hey, you want us to join a band? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> just like you're just sitting there across the, you know hey you want to join a band and you're like yeah i'll join a band yeah. Is yeah. It like your friend from germany or something like that yeah right? yeah doug doug yeah my be best friend there and uh yeah. It, yeah it just and i was like yeah why not you know let's let's do this like it's so it, it is you know now you reflect back and it's like really you just read out, out on the, the you know in the backyard like hey you want to want to do a band thing i'm like yeah, yeah let's do that let's do a band thing <laughs> <laughs> and I can, so as we're, I can I can specifically remember it was funny we're sitting up in in Matt's living room at his mom's house so that's we practice in the basement uh, briefly there and we we're watching uh, Corn Live or something like that and and Matt's just like do it do it I'm like do what it's the Are you ready and uh, you know it, 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 and I, so I, I screamed that and there was a whole bunch of people in the room and I was just like why you got to do that to me man this. <laughs> <laughs> so as long as I can remember, I've, I've been the uh, reluctant lead guy, you know, the, the, Hey, don't pay attention to me, but pay attention to me. That, I don't know. I don't know why. It's awesome, <laughs> it's awesome man. It's awesome. And you know what, as a, I think that as you get in front of more people, which will happen, um, yeah. I'm guaranteeing that that will happen because I know you're talented. 
um, you'll get more comfortable over time. It, it'll just happen. You won't even think about the crowds anymore. You'll just be in front of the crowds and you'll be yeah. vibing off their energy. Now yep. you've done a couple gigs um, oh, yeah. throughout your time and Kit, what kind of gigs were those? And you know, how much fun was that? What was your, like, do you feel like you're feeding off the crowd when you're in front of them? How was, you know, how does that feel for you? It, it really, it depends now. Uh, I, I hate to say this story. This is, I, I got yelled at by my drummer one time um, because we got, booked on a, a hardcore show now you've you've heard the music i have it's it's not it's not hardcore we're heavy but we're not hardcore and it's there's i have zero issue with hardcore music it's not particularly right. my thing um but it's it's just it's different it's not heavy enough for you know so we go up and we're one of the opening bands and we're we we rock out on the first song second song and then the the crowd started backing up from us and i was just like all right i was starting to get a little frustrated like hey you know we're i'm I'm screaming my my ass off here like you guys aren't into this. And then they just no reaction at the end of one of the songs. And the next song was Spin, which is by far our most radio friendly song that we have. And I, I said to the crowd, well, if you hated that one, you're really going to hate this one. Well, it's not what Matt, the drummer, heard. <laughs> so he played the rest of the show very angry at me for insulting our band. And I was like in front of the crowd and I was just like, he was, you know, the, not cornered me, but he's like, Hey, what was that all about? Um, and I was like, Oh, I was, I was picking on them for not being into us. You know, it was my attempt at humor. Uh, and it didn't, it did it just didn't play well. It didn't play with well with Matt. It didn't play well with the crowd. It didn't, I was like, Oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> so um, that was learn. There is a, a very, well, it's not open anymore. There was a, uh, a very well-known band uh, place up in Rochester, New York called the Penny Arcade for the longest time, you know, uh, bands would come in, or big, not huge bands, but bigger bands would come in and play and then local bands would play. And we got to play there at least twice. So that was really a good deal for us. There was a couple clubs. I think it was Steel Music Hall. We got to play one time up there. And then some local stuff. Um, I don't know if we, I don't think we ever did a battle of bands. We did some, some bars and some hit or miss venues. We didn't play a ton, but we played enough to get that feel of being in front of people. And uh, right. I did play in front of a college crowd one time, but that was not with this band. It was, I was doing just screen parts for a band called Transparent. And uh, they got booked on uh, Alfred State College here. And it was in basement and there was 20, 30 people there or something like that. And I remember the lead singer was pacing back and forth. He's all nervous. He was, he's like, how can you be so calm? I'm like, I've been doing this like 10 years, dude. I, it's okay. Right. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> Calm down. You, you'll be fine. <laughs> we played the show and everything was hunky dory, but it was, it was just, it was, I was a, I was a screamer for hire at one point in time for a very brief portion of, uh, my career, if you want to call it as a screamer. <laughs> that's awesome, man. That's awesome. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. So uh tell us another story. What's one of your other favorite stories? Venue maybe a favorite venue that you go to that you were just like, this is yeah. exciting to be at. Uh, uh, I don't know. That's <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not quite sure where what to go with. I it's been a whole lot of you know, the past, I don't know, we'll say 20 years, you know, with that, with the absence of the, the, the 12 years or maybe it's 25 years that I've been doing in band stuff. Um, I think the, the, my favorite part is the practicing only because I get to hang out with my friends. It's, it's, right. you know, creating music is, is the best part. And it, it's probably the definition of a uh, garage band that you, you're, you're forever practicing. And then every now and again, you get to go out and play, but, um, the friendships are made, you know, and lost sometimes <laughs> in the band room. Um, right. But it's it, it's a it's just I enjoy it. It's it's a way to bond with people and a way to do what you love and, and get creative. Even though I'm not much help writing songs. Hey, how's that sound? Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> <That was last night. laughs> in the background, like, hey, good job. how's that sound? Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Like all you have to do is just provide vocals for you're really just sitting back and kind of just getting musically like entertained. Yep. And then just all you gotta do is just fill in vocal tracks. Yep. Well, and I, I can tell you the worst part about being a vocalist, at least for me, is writing lyrics. Now, 
I say that I have a lot to say. I have opinions on stuff. I have, you know, uh, passions, uh, things I want to say, uh, arguing with uh, vocal patterns and what I want to say and making them go together. Don't always, <laughs> it doesn't no, always work. It's like, true. I have, I have a thought of how this is supposed to go, but I can't make those words, you know, fit into there. Like I'll write a bunch of stuff like, yeah, this is what I want to say. It's like, this is garbage. <laughs> this is, we're, we're throwing that all out. Yeah. That's the way it is, man. That's, um, and, and I guess that was one of the things I did want to, I'm not, I, when I have inspirations for songs, I write them, you know, for my own personal purpose and that's, you know, people, what's a song about? What's it mean to you? I am, nobody is going to completely agree with you on something, but if you can, you listen to a song and it means something to you, go with that. It doesn't matter why I wrote it. That's, right, uh, you know. That's the, see, and that's the reason why I do this. This is why I do this. And this is why music is an expression from the musician mm -hmm. as well as the receiver. So right, right, the creator and the receiver. So why do I love music? I play music. I've been a guitarist for a very long time now, since I was like 14. So I absolutely, it's my go-to for emotional, you know, I, I have spurts where I go just like you, where I go in and out of playing, you know, I've, I'm now kind of doing more regular practicing again mm -hmm. because I've kind of been jammed, you know, now I've been talking yeah. to about this, this music stuff more. It's got me got, going again. But it's an expression for me emotionally. But then additionally, you flip it on the hand. If we think about some of our best moments, you think about your wedding, you mm -hmm. think about things that are very important. There always is music aligned with it somewhere. You think about yep. this is our song. This is our first date song. Yep. This is the song that I got married to. This was our first dance. You think about all the important engagements in your life. Usually music was involved in it. Yep. And that's why they put them in your car. Now you have headphones to go along with it. When you're working out, there's yep. music allow is everywhere in your life. And being able to be soothed by it, be able to be amped yeah. by it. It's stress it's relief. Such, absolutely. And it's so important. And it's so important. And that's the reason why being able to be just like yourself, I want people to hear the creative stuff that goes into it. Yeah. So that they can enjoy it just as much as I have been doing making it. I don't, you know, I sit, I sit in my, my house and just make music, but I enjoy the fact that it's emotionally satisfying and, but being able to create it, yeah. it's amazing. Especially when you have talent, when you have it's talent, it's amazing. So right now I want everybody to hear the first, probably, I think it's the first time on YouTube, right? I, uh, this song, yes. Uh, this you song, can yeah. Find me on YouTube if you know where to search. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna listen to one of his EPs that he made. What was this? Twelve years ago or so, right? My wife's embarrassed for me over here, right there. She's. <laughs> she, loved you. she wants to do the la, 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 la thing. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna play. This is uh, his EP. We want to play it. I want everybody to crank their sound, whatever they're listening to right now, as loud as it can get, so you can hear what we're talking about. Awesome music. <laughs>
<laughs> That's freaking phenomenal, man. <laughs> I can listen to that freaking all day, phenomenal. every day. <laughs> just a repeat. I, I, when I was oh recording, goodness. I mean, I just recorded that probably two or three weeks ago there. And I was just like, I didn't, I, because we recorded it 12 years ago, I've lost some of my range, uh, you know, just not doing it every day or doing it weekly and all right. that stuff. And I didn't know how low I could get again. I was like, oh no, that's plenty low. That'd be just fine. <laughs> Holy moly, dude. That just blows just, my Oh my soul. God. That, that's just, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and this oh, is Gary. this is yeah. Hey Gary, what's going on, buddy? What, um, freaking amazing, freaking amazing, dude. I uh, I, I don't even have words to nice. describe how talented that is. I, so, it just is amazingly good. On our our, our EP, I'm calling it EP because I don't know what else to call it. Um, it'll be five songs. Two of the songs, that's one of them. Uh, we recorded already 12 years ago, which would be Spin and then uh, that song. And then Comply and It's Over are two brand new songs that we just got done writing within the past year. And then we did a cover of uh, Faith No More's Gentle Art of Making Enemies. Uh, nice. We we initially were going to do Marilyn Manson, but then Marilyn got in a whole bunch of trouble late, <laughs> as of recently um, with some just bad, just bad mojo, and they were like, "Hey, maybe we shouldn't do that." Oh, yeah. So we went with my favorite band, which is Faith No More, and I was like, "Hey, what about this song?" Because yeah. we we practice that song, and they're like, "Yeah, let's let's do that one." <laughs> that's a good, that's a good choice. Yep, right on. Yep. Very cool. Very cool. And you got a ton of people just you just like totally okay. honest, totally cool. Yeah. Hey, what's going on? What's going on? She chimed in. She's like, "What is this music you're playing? Stop it!" <laughs> no, she, she she's August. all for it. <laughs> yeah, she's, all, she's for it. all for it. Yeah, absolutely. She's a she's yeah yeah definitely. That's what I was like. Do you have another one? <laughs> yeah. But I I knew that I knew that that will and we'll definitely have to have you come on again because uh, you know as you release your new EP, that's what we're all about is helping promote new bands coming up with new premiere stuff and EPs and. So yeah. as you get further along with your EP uh, release, we'll definitely have you on again to help nice. uh, promote that. And so, yeah, very cool. I, I just blown away, dude. So we're now going to switch a little gears uh, mm -hmm. and we're going to talk a little bit about food that you like. Oh, and we're going to talk a little bit of desserts, food. So when you're on the road, what is it that you're eating? What is the snack of choice when you're on the road for gas station food or whatever it is that you're out and about doing to help kind of get you ready for a gas gig? station, fast food, whatever, like whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever soothes your, you know, your. <laughs> I have the weirdest, the weirdest, I don't even know if it's a habit or if you want to call it that. I race. So I race my go-karts if you've seen some of that stuff. Right. Every time I leave, and I was very upset this past Saturday, every time I leave the racetrack, I have a, 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 a it's a craving for buffalo blue cheese combos and chocolate milk. I have no idea why. It's and it's every time after a race. It's, <laughs> it's so odd. <laughs> It is so odd, but I want it. Like every time I do leave a track, I'm like, "Ooh, combos, yeah." <laughs> do you know what? I, I do like combos. Yep. <laughs> chocolate. The chocolate milk's the one that I. Yeah. Like, yeah. Ooh. Yep. Yeah. No <laughs> guys like, combos, especially <laughs> buffalo <laughs> and blue cheese. Yeah. <laughs> like, are you pregnant, sir? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, they did. They didn't have buffalo blue cheese, so I had to get uh, uh, pizza uh, ones, and I was just—it's—it's just, it's just not the same. I mean, they were good. Don't get me wrong, but I'll eat them. Okay. <laughs> I used to eat com so how I found combos was after wrestling matches. I would mm -hmm. go. There would be like we'd go to the. I'd be on base, and there would be like a shopette, and I'd be like, "Okay, we're at this school. The only thing that's open is a shopette. So let's go to the shopette, guys." So we go to the base shopette, and then we would pick like whatever was available. And combos just came out. This is like early '90s, and so I was like, "Yep, these are the ones." And I used to buy them, and then if it was like my yeah. my celebration, if I won that match, that was my celebration. Nice you know, combo time, yeah. combo time. Yeah. <laughs> so now we know. After a good gig, after yeah. a good win, like he is doing. So that's something that we haven't really discussed yet. But he also has another side passion. Other than beards, other than amazing freaking music, 
he has <laughs> tell us about your your carts i mean these things are freaking amazing and you have two of them right yeah yeah now it's a small engine and big engine the, the little engine's called a kt100 it's a piston port 100 cc i'm a two-stroke guy uh mm -hmm. so you can run four strokes and and this and that but um i grow run local here and i was doing what was it was it 50 59.2 mile an hour or something in the little motor so it's a oh little this support 100 cc it's like 18 20 horsepower my big motor i'm gonna go race this saturday because unlimited all-stars are gonna be there my big motor is a 270 cc reed motor on methanol oh and it's somewhere 65 70 horsepower so i'll be doing 80 at the end of the straightaway no seat belts in a go-kart oh <laughs> That's what I'm saying. This is like souped up man stuff. What he yeah, does. Yeah. Souped up man stuff. I was watching as you won the last race, right? You yeah. were in lead, right? Yep. yep. He doesn't take, he takes no prisoners in this. He's like, you think you, you see Ben Taft and like, he comes on reviewers table, usually a little mellow, humble. He's fuck freaking kicking ass. <laughs> <laughs> It's I, I'm a very passionate person, I guess. <laughs> so I was waiting for I was waiting for somebody to make the comment of saying a four stroke or two stroke. So you yeah. got uh, Rob's comment with what a coincidence. I'm a two stroke guy. Wife gets real mad though. <laughs> so I was waiting for somebody to pull it. Uh, I was waiting for somebody to, to say it. How you, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome guys yeah, um man. and we got a lot of good folks in the in the in the crowd today we got uh got chris we got tanya what's going on we got deliberately bearded man we got we got rob i love rob good dude yeah, uh, sure two stroke is better crowd. than a one punch huh? yeah that's right <laughs> <laughs> we got bushy beard in um nice. and, and so this is the time also if you guys want to ask any questions of ben he's here to answer questions about his band yeah. uh you can talk about his go on, his go karts, his winning ways of go kartness. I mean, I he, I'll yeah. sit there and we'll be talking, and I'll see him, and he's like in his garage. That's where he's like, this is where is like he his that like his man cave is like what a two story barn in the yeah. back of your yard. Yep. Wow. It, it's it, yeah. I just go out there, and it, it it's not you know like all it's dirty and manly, and I don't know. It's just. I work on cars for a living. So you think that I want to stay away from mechanical stuff and fixing this and that. But when, when it's something you're, I like doing, it's not work. I mean, it technically is work. I'm standing on my feet and I'm working on stuff and this and that. But when you, when you, you know, when you're into that, it's not a, it's not work. You know, it's like I come in and uh, I'm tired. It's like, Oh, you, you've been on your feet all day, dude. <laughs> right. <laughs> Good times, man. It's good times, good times. <laughs> <laughs> I love Rob's it. I yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally good, man. I, I absolutely love it. And so, and you're actually are taking this out and about. So you're taking it to raceways and you're winning, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, and, I resigned uh, this past year. I was uh, the administrator for what's called the Unlimited All-Star. So it's, there's a, a, a set you know, rule package that you can't go beyond this in CCs and, and you have to weigh a certain amount. The carts, like they're fast carts. And uh, it's like, it's the basically the highest form of carting you get to before you go to bigger stuff that has like, you know, motorcycle engines or big cars and this and that. It's as fast as you can get in a go-kart type of stuff. But I did that. I was administrator for like seven years. I think I raced uh, Unlimited All-Stars for better part, 13, 15 years. And it just the traveling war on me because it would be four or five hour, you know, drives to go to a track. And I ended up the last race I raced on Lumen L stars was down at the bottom of Ohio. So it was a nine hour drive down there, nine hour drive back. And I just, uh, I'm, I'm tired. So my local tracks are within an hour of me. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go back to my roots. I started racing with my friends uh, 20 years ago or close to it. And we're, I'm going to get a smaller engine package. We're going to go race. We're just going to go a Saturday night and have fun. It's an hour drive home. Oh, I'm, I get to sleep in my own bed. This is amazing because I can't tell you I've driven, you know, four or five, you know, in the, in the morning home, or I've seen the sun come up, coming back from a race. And it just, it wears on you when you do it year after year after year. It's just, it's too much. I want to be closer to home. I want to be near friends and stuff. And not that I don't have friends in the limited all-stars. It's just... I have to travel so far to see them. It's like, <laughs> sorry, right, I'm, right. 
I got to chill out for at least a little bit, guys. You know, give me a couple years and maybe (laughs) I can do it again. (laughs) Totally. (laughs) Totally get it. You know, that's the weirdest thing. And I think as I got older, um, I used to love I I worked for a hotel company up until (laughs) recently. And so I love staying at hotels. And then after like I hit my maybe mid thirties, I'm like, I'm so tired of ever staying at a hotel. I didn't sleep well anymore. And I was just like, there's something to be said about coming home at the end of the night and sleeping in your own bed. Yeah. Yep. All right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Getting yeah. in. Well, yeah. Norman, my little wiener dog. He, uh, he usually <laughs> alerts, alerts everybody that I'm home when I come home two, three in the morning. Well, I got home at two, I think by a Saturday, he didn't even get up. He's, he's, he's getting lazy in his old age. <laughs> I could have murdered everybody in here, buddy. Where are you at? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We had a dog like that. And it was like, yeah, um, are you just as long as you don't cross my path? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I am. I'm I'm quieter now. I, you know, would walk in and try not to make a, a whole heck of a lot of noise. All right. As we know, as older men and been married for a while, a happy wife of not hearing yeah. us come in and sneaking into bed and then she waking up the next morning going, oh, you're oh, I didn't know you yeah. got in. That is a beautiful moment, a beautiful yeah. moment of, hey, yeah, that's right. I got in and you have no idea because I didn't make any noise to wake your beauty sleep. <laughs> So, man, what a heck of a... I, I'm just still blown away by that song, dude. I, I just, oh, yeah. to be honest with you, amped me up, man. That's just such... I'm so into metal that I spent, like, all of my youth listening, growing up in 80s metal land. And so when you start hearing really good metal and it's, you know, coming from somebody you really know, <laughs> that's even more right. ampy to me. I mean, it's what, just, what, like, gets you going. One of the things I, I, I love about my band, I mean, you, obviously I'm in the band, so I, I, I kind of have to say it, but it isn't... The, the when we were talking the, the trying to put that song into like a genre yes it's metal but it's not your your typical type you know it's it, it sounds like us you know who do we sound like we sound like us not to say we're so original but it's it's like uh, I enjoy what we put together because it is you know it's like we're all influenced by different things like uh you know um uh, we we have the Sean's it's S E A N the Sean and then oh. S H A W N N and then when I want to you know it's the Sean's they're the guitar players um scene S E A N he's more like a hippie jam band type thing but he can play you know heavy music and then uh Sean is he I know he likes you know Marilyn Manson stuff like that and he's real good at like chug riffs and stuff and he, he uh, it just it melts so well together and you know uh I really, really enjoy it because it, it is unique. You know, we don't, we can do cover songs because we're, you know, we, for fun, but when we write, it is, it, it's us. It's the way we sound. And it, uh, I did, I just really get, I like it. <laughs> I like it a lot. It's, it's total fire. Even, total uh, fire. even during the song, I'm trying to, I was trying to, I kind of see who you sounded like because like, well, you said new metal. So it's like around that kind of yeah. era where new metal was kind of coming out um, about, um, but yeah, I was trying to pick out like what band it sounded like and really I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't kind of yeah. pick something. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it sounds just like a lot of everything mixed yeah. into one, which is good. Yep, which is awesome. Which is awesome. Which means it unique niche for you guys to be yeah. able to be. Because if everybody sounds like Megadeth, I mean, yeah. there for a long time. I remember when I was in the '90s, there was Anthrax, Iron Maiden, you know, Megadeth, Metallica. Everybody started yeah. sounding. There was a whole lot of bands on the other side. Yeah. of people that sounded exactly like Metallica. Um, yeah. I can think of Flotsam and Jetsam, for instance. Oh, um, yeah. Very much sounded like Metallica. And actually, the bassist, they were so sounded yeah. like Metallica that when the unfortunate fact that their bassist died, yeah. um, the bassist for Flotsam and Jetsam, which is out of Phoenix, by the way, um, they actually took him on. He's the current bassist for Metallica. The... the uh, um... Shoot, what the heck? What the heck? Uh, Newstead. He lives in New York yep. now. <laughs> yep. He li- it's like he's like a, uh, an hour and a half or two hours away from me or something up by some lake. I'm like, dude, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. If you want to hear his earlier stuff, it's Flotsam yeah. and Jetsam. He yeah, Flotsam and Jetsam. Yeah. I've, I've, yeah. Uh, my friend Jamie was uh, real big into them way back when. And he was just like, dude, this Jason, Jason Newstead, he plays on that. I was like, wow, that's awesome. <laughs> it's cool. growing cool. up. It, uh, Jamie was uh, he was a huge kiss kiss guy. And I, yeah. I like Kiss, but I wasn't like, oh, Kiss. I was more Aerosmith, which oh, yeah. is weird. And uh, I was kind of thinking 
this interview coming up, I was just like, what album inspired me the most? And it was uh, Angel Dust by Faith No More. Now, I know that the real thing was their biggest hit and everybody, and I liked it. Don't get me wrong. That I was, I was in that. I watched MTV at the time, but when angel dust came about, Ooh, I was like, it, it, Mike Patton kind of taught me that if you want to be a vocalist, you don't have to follow everybody else. You could just do what you want. Just, just you right. know, don't, don't conform what, what's interesting to you. And I'm like, Ooh, I like this guy. <laughs> well, and that's the one thing about Faith No More, that they are very unique. And yeah. Yeah. that was the one thing that got them into where they were at, is they're unique. They had a really unique vibe. Their yeah. guitars were very unique and very, um, for the time, they were very just metal. Just yeah. totally yeah. great yeah. driving metal. But it, then they also had the vocals on the other side that sounded really rough. But yep. yet loud, you know. Yeah. It was, uh, it was and awesome. what, what I it kills me every time they come out with a new album. I mean, they uh, they came out with a uh, Soul Invictus within the past. Oh, geez, it's been four years now or something like that. Well, anyway, um, every time they come out with an album, it's like, oh, this doesn't sound like Faith No More. Well, you're not paying attention because the the real thing sounded, you know, nothing like the album before. Uh, introduce yourself, and then Angel Dust sounded nothing like that, and it, you know. It, as it follows Perhaps. along, it's just like um, they just yeah. at the at that moment. What are we into? What do we want to play? All right, that's what we're recording. They don't, you know, they didn't follow other people's ideas of what how music should be. And I'm like, yeah, that's that's right. that's the way you do it. <laughs> as we all know, as musicians, that's what you do. You transform into different things. You can go through a jazz phase. You go through a mm -hmm. blues phase. You go through a metal phase. Yep. Maybe even a country. Maybe some you know soft rock is like turning you on right now. Mm -hmm. and, and so you make an album. That's why when people go, oh, Metallica sold out. I'm like, no, they just changed the way yeah. they, they became better musicians. You know, yeah. honestly, Kiss, if you think about Kiss and you look at their track record of Kiss, they yeah. were a horrible band. Right. horrible music at the first beginning of them they weren't good they knew how to play yeah. a show and they were really good they were putting out like three albums a year yep. they were just throwing stuff together but their shows were immaculate but as they got better that's especially in the like the 80s yep. they started getting more musically talented yep. and their right. shows started being better and that's when they could take the makeup off. And it started that one album where they actually took when everybody was taking their makeup off. Finally, um, <laughs> then they put it back on, of course. But yeah. uh, but that was what, you know, they're, they're excellent musicians now. Yeah. And they didn't start off like that. They but they the one thing that they had was a show. Yeah. Their shows were amazing. And that's if you will watch the 70s, the Dodge Rock. Uh, was it uh, something about? Rock in whatever Detroit City. Mm -hmm. Oh, Detroit um, Rock City. Yeah. Detroit, yeah, Detroit Rock City. That that whole yeah, you know, like where they the whole thing in the lead up to the concert and didn't they yeah. do a didn't they do a horror movie? <laughs> they did. They did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember watching that. It was like Kiss and the the something about the yeah the haunted park or I, something like that. I do remember it though. It's in there somewhere. They took yeah. they took advantage of their popularity at the oh, time. Dude. <laughs> Good for them, you know. Just hey, let let's see how far we can push this before people are like, whoa, 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 that's too far. <laughs> yeah, and there's and there's going to be purist Kiss fans out there. They're going to oh, hate yeah. me saying that I didn't think they were very musically yeah. talented. They they had musical talent, but they weren't the most talented. And as you can see, that they progressed through the years, they got better. And yeah. I think that as their music changed. Or as the scene changed, so did their music. Mm -hmm. I actually just yeah. watched Detroit Rock City the other, the other day. Nice. <laughs> Ironically, it's still it's still cool. Star Child still cool. Yeah, Star Child. <laughs> yeah, that was my. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys watch that one show? He had like a reality He's show. A right? Ron. Of course, Ron knows who that is <laughs> or what that is. <laughs> 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 I love, you know, this is the fun thing about it is, is that there's a couple guys in our community that are our age and they get all the same stuff that we do all yeah. of the same. They were listening to the same music when we were, and it's, it's just fun to be able it's, to reminisce. It is so odd talking to my kids now, it, it, not odd, but it, trying to explain to them that my grandmother took me to, I'm looking at my microwave. It just popped in my head, a, a microwave teaching class because microwaves were invented when I was a youth. 
yes. and it was like they were the the yes. new thing and and it was just like wow i am dating myself aren't i Whoo! and it, <laughs> That's like and it, it, and it had a dial yep. you record the vcr yep <laughs> yep and it had a dial it's and seven, the vcrs seven had o'clock. a <laughs> yep. yeah. the clicker the rem- the remote, right? Yep. The remote yep. on the VCR was connected to the VCR. Yeah. <laughs> there was a cord. It was a cord to it. Yep. And if you, otherwise, you were the. Actually, what I said was, guess who was the the remote when I was growing up? It was us kids. Yep. Oh yeah. Yep. <laughs> Go put in another tape. <laughs> yep. My and actually, uh, MTV yeah. actually played music back then. Just the like uh, before I, all the band stuff Vermont. or anything, I, I, maybe I was you know played around a little bit, but uh, it just occurred to me. My dad had bought an eight hundred dollar stereo, and it sat right out there in the in the living room. And he, my neighbors from three houses down, were complaining about me because I was playing Allison Chains, uh, Dirt. And it, the first thing, ah! And he said, the the my neighbor said I could hear the walls vibrating. He had it so loud. <laughs> <laughs> Alice in Change is another great band, man. That was a oh, oh, sound. Uh, yep. Yes. That was, uh, you know, uh, I think being in high school was at the, you know, one of the the perfect times. I mean, Kurt had just died and everything, but but uh, alternative music, grunge music was just, it, everybody's wearing flannels, the whole nine yards. And uh, it it always, you know, the, the, uh, the classes in school, you could see the, the, everybody divvying up like are you cool enough to listen to this and that but uh right. th- that is right about the time i found faith and more and really got into you know my own thing and alice in chains i was i was into grunge my wife and i share i mean we loved uh you know pearl jam was one of the first things we listened together uh corduroy was was one of the songs that we we kind of bonded over uh initially but uh that whole music genre just it, it, it such a good time for music it was creative it was new it was different it was you know i, I like that i like and at the time it was you know uh different than what was in the mainstream and that always you know catches my eye i, I always like the the different sounds that's exactly what it was yeah. that's and that's why when people think about why nirvana was so crucial it's because it was the new sound that changed the way that we looked at music, just like the Beatles, right. Elvis, yep. uh, you name some of the seventies bands, black Sabbath, for instance, for metal. Oh, yeah. um, you take a look at that. Those are, those are the times where things change. The music of the time changed completely for about 10, 15 years. Yep. And it has right. never really it, it, like old eighties metal is never the hair band metal is gone. I mean, there's some bands that may sound a little similar and there's some alternative ones that kind of come back, but I think grunge got, got into it and then changed the whole scene completely to yeah. where, you know, there's a few bands that hung on, you know, that were like the crew, some, they still created music, but I'll tell you that Nirvana changed the world. You know, mm-hmm. they really nice. did. That's uh, Sean's in the one of my guitar players. He's in the chat there. <laughs> Sean, What's going on, buddy? What's Dean going on, buddy? Kelly himself. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Like, how, you, so, how am I supposed to say Sean? That's not how you spell Sean. <laughs> <laughs> it's seen. What I know, I had yep. a friend named Sean the same way. I have yep. actually a couple of friends named Sean with the S E A N. And yep. um, so, do you know what? So, of course, you know I listen to I listen to your vocals, but what am I tuned into? I'm I'm listening to guitar, and that oh, guitar yeah. is totally rocking. I, I just amazing licks on that, and the fact that yep. it was that it was created and not just a top twenty, you know, top forty yeah. hit. Yep. It, it, to be able to create something that that sounds that freaking good. Yeah, it, it takes talent. It's just talented. I, it, I, guitar I, riffs I really- and. I can say as a vocalist, I'll, I'll be honest, sometimes the writing process is a little slow for me. So last night they were they were trying to, you know, they, <laughs> they were playing something. It was just like, all right, well, there's no drums. We're, I'm not, you know, really needed at this point in time. And they were just, uh, they, were, they, were, they, were, they, were, they were writing. They were doing the thing that they do. And it's very important. But as I, I get to be the diva, and they, they often call me the diva. Sometimes I'm late <laughs> to band practice. Sometimes I just, you know, I don't, I don't really want to do that, guys. <laughs> so he is the lead singer. You're okay. okay. Kind you of. Got but you got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
there are some liberties to being, you know, like, ah, oh, you don't really need me to do anything right now, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go drink some coffee in the back. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be in the sound room. There, you guys I tell you what, there this. there is an old couch in our band practice room, which is uh, the the garage of my uh, basis there, and it is old and it is it's broken down, but is you sink into it, and I have the corner, and I just and I'm right there. It's just like, oh, you want me to do something? <laughs> Come on, man! <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. So this is the time where we start talking a little bit about uh, desserts. <laughs> and um, this is, so what is your favorite dessert of all times, uh, Ben? Ooh, Just to set boy. the record. Uh, I, I love just in general cookies, but if I'm getting fancy, uh, creme brulee, oh, dude, oh, dude, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. It's so good. I don't, I hardly ever get to have it. You know, it's just not something you come you come by that often. But uh, I think the last time I had it at a local restaurant, not that they're overly fancy, but they offered it and I ate it. And I was just like, I forgot how much I love this stuff. Yeah, <laughs> Grimbley is, yeah, Grimbley is so good. Yep, it is so good. I had a boss that every place that we ever went and we we went to like at least once a month, we were able to go out on the as a team. And every dessert, she like usually it's like just lunch, and you're like, uh, we'll just eat lunch and then go back. She always had to make sure that creme brulee was mm -hmm. ordered, and she got some before she left. Yeah, always. Uh, Doug Little, there. That's that's uh, one of my best friends. That's a bassist. Uh, in hey, the what's there. going on, buddy? He is also hey. the one that went to Germany for uh, and uh, uh, we made for my wife and I my wedding. He showed me how to make roses, purple roses, out of marzipan. So we we were rolling up and, and making the, the rose petals out of it. <laughs> That's <laughs> just, pretty cool. Just That's popped pretty in cool. my head there. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. So as a uh, – we do – I make a lot of things out of marzipan. That's a yep. part of a, a traditional spiritual thing is nice. marzipan. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. So going on to that, so we all know that Andy has bought – has brought – I just can't even compete with the dude. Just can't even <laughs> – I tried for the first couple of weeks. I made a cake. I think I made some <laughs> strawberry shortcake <laughs> and I just was like, there's just no way. So now my desserts are just things like the candy bars or robbing my kids candy of Easter <laughs> baskets. I told my yes, wife, I said, Hey, I need it. Still got, this is actually from the grocery store. I got to myself a little musket, three musketeers. Ooh. So, and it's the double one. So you can have a little bit more. I, I like maybe the, share it with somebody else. I like tart stuff. The, the, the sour stuff. When I, if I'm getting candy, it's, it's really my preference, which it, it's changed over the years. I used to love chocolate and it was always Snickers or something like that. But now I, I really do like tart, you know, just that sour type of bite stuff. I, I, Super enjoy it. <laughs> Me too. You know, I really do too. And the kids, there's a place, a, like a healthy food place that has, you know, those big buckets of like Sour Patch kids and stuff mm -hmm. that are like, oh, yeah. the, like they're made by somebody, but they're not Sour Patch. They're made, yeah. but they're like gummy worms, but they're mm -hmm. sprinkled in that like sour Ooh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. We have that. So the sour ones, and then they have the ones in Tahim that are like the Mexican candy ones. Oh, yeah. Those are, those are amazing. I like nice. the team a lot on them. So here's what we're, so you got to see my musketeers. And again, I'm not even, even going to compare the master is over there. <laughs> right over there. The other way, this way. Yep. So this guy right over here, uh, he showed me a picture of what he just made Monday. And I, 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 not, I don't want to ruin it. I don't want to ruin it yet. But what did you, okay, already, is that what you, that's what I'm going to What did you bring? Yeah, yeah, let's see it. Let's see what he got. Uh, this, this is, is my uh, favorite food of all time. The uh, tres leche cake. Uh, oh, yeah. Mmm. Yeah. <laughs> so good. It's yeah. the first time I've never actually made it. It's, it's pretty good. It's, it's pretty simple to make. The majority is it's just all eggs. And it's just the process of doing it is fun. Um, but yeah, I've never made it before. It came out really good. Nice. <laughs> It is so good. So that's the reason why, as you all well know, he's a professional chef and uh, I'm a professional chef wannabe. So <laughs> I'm a, I'm a uh, wannabe barbecuist. 
Uh, you and know then, what? I've seen some of that barbecue, dude. dude that looks the pretty thing damn that kills good. Me is I just start getting into this. I'm looking at my, my, my pellet girl right here. I just start getting into it. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be cooking this and that. Go to the doctors. They draw blood. They're like, Hey, you have high cholesterol. I'm like, Oh, sounds like vegan kebabs for a while. <laughs> I, listen, I did my research. They're like, just pick lean meats. Like tonight I had just a, a little, uh, a little pork line, a little, you know, lean pork line, a little rub on it, put it out there, cooked it to, you know, to one, I think at 160, I pulled it and uh, carved it up. Oh, delicious. Right. Mwah. Lean meats, lean, just keep the fat out of there, buddy. <laughs> well, <we laughs> Which I, I love some ribs good, and stuff. So look at all these, like, oh, look at all these. Yes. Cheese, cheese, cake, egg. Egg. Yeah. Cake, chocolate yeah. Yeah. Bar. I yep. like me some carrot cake. Now, if I say oh, that yeah. every year that I can think of in the last, well, since I've been married, 14 years, Christy has gotten me a carrot cake from Bunt, nothing Bunt Cakes. Ooh. Holy moly. If you guys have never had nothing Bunt Cakes, uh, mm -hmm. it's a Bunt Cake, of course, but they're little miniature ones, and they make them like in chocolate and carrot cake, and then they'll have like seasonal ones. So good. So good. And the what it is is it's just the icing. It's like they just layer oh, yeah. this icing on it, and you're just like, oh, man. Sometimes that's icing. I don't like that fluffy crap. Like we have a local, it's called Wegmans yeah, up here. Sometimes no, they put no. that fluffy stuff on there. I like, yeah. you know, uh, I like the the sugary, like, but sometimes it's too much. It's like, holy, poo. <laughs> I like the cream, the cream, the cream uh, topping, mm -hmm. like where it's, yeah, that's right. my favorite. That's the butter kind my mom did. Buttercream, 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 buttercream. Um, so Trace Leche is definitely, so from the Southwest, that is everywhere in every single carnisteria there is a tres leche cake that is made by nana somewhere <laughs> <laughs> and she's now selling it as well as the fresh tortillas on the on the uh that they're selling i just absolutely love that about living in the southwest is that it's all fresh of course living you know this is the one part about living on the west coast is that um i cannot just go down the street to go bother james the bearded metal chef for some food because i'm just <laughs> right. like because by the time that i would get tres leche it'd be like no leche <laughs> no. <laughs> it'd be there'd be no trace it would be just no leche it'd be like just a mess but it would be awesome to be able to just go uh, down there does y'all ever have the plastic light cake that they always have at weddings these days i think they would mean like the uh yeah. what fondant or something like that no, yeah, yeah, that oh, way, yeah, yeah. popping stuff, yeah. You yeah. know what? And if you go, the, the so we had a friend that really did went out, and my wife was just like, make a simple thing with buttercream. It's all I want for our wedding cake. Just mm -hmm. make a simple thing. And this lady, and she was super nice, and I don't think that she realized that Christy really just likes buttercream cake with, you know, chocolate. She put the, like, filling in it, which is, I love it. I'm just like, oh, this has like raspberry filling in it. My wife's like, I didn't ask for that for my wedding. And I'm like, okay, you're right. But it's still really good. <laughs> but she's like, just chocolate and buttercream. That's all she's about. Yeah. For I, my birthday was what Monday, Monday, and yeah. uh, we we went up to Texas Roadhouse and this and that. And, uh, and my wife knows I'm not huge on cakes. I, I just I prefer cookies. Um, and oh, if I do do something like a pound cake or something like that is strawberry pound cake. I really like, um, but we, we hit Sonic to that big, big scoop of uh, cookie dough. Yeah, <laughs> Holy yeah, yeah. smokes. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah, really yeah. good. <laughs> like dangerous. Really good. Good. I'm glad it's like 45 minutes away from me. So I just, I can't have it. Like, <sighs> Sonic maybe. is literally <laughs> two minutes away from me. Yeah. yeah. Sonic oh. is literally, we get Sonic. I use, I get Sonic. Actually, you know what? I have, they have a coconut iced tea. So I'll just get iced tea and then they'll put some of that coconut like syrup in it. Yep. So good. I, I get that like every Saturday morning. Yeah. Um, so we're running out. We want to, we want to keep these down to about an hour so uh, that we can it's Thursday night. So I want to make sure that we've, sh we've shared some music. Um, is there mm -hmm. anything that you want us to know about your band that you haven't already talked about? Uh, you have a new release coming up in the next month or two, maybe three I months. hope so. <laughs> That's, well, yeah. We're, we're working on figuring out if there's any guitar stuff that really I'm done vocally. Uh, drums are done. Um, 
and uh, the base is done. But I think, I think, yeah, I think Doug cleaned that up. Um, I think there might be a couple guitar parts or not, but then post production. So it just has to get mixed and leveled. Like, you know, me listening to when you play that track, it's not completely done. So I'm, I'm forward too much in my opinion. Um, I need to be back in the mix a little bit. Uh, and again, you, here's a, a, a lead singer, you know, like, whoa, 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 that's too much me. <laughs> I, I, I honestly do. You know, it's, if it, if it hurts the music, the, there's no need for the singer to be that far forward. Like bring them back, put them in the mix. Like I said, the, you know, vocal cords are just another instrument, blend it together, make it sound good. Um, so I don't know what process or how many cubic dollars it's going to cost to get the pros production done. But as soon as that happens, I'm, uh, I'm going to try and get everything like Spotify, obviously YouTube, uh, iTunes, stuff like that. Try and get, everything out there so i can say hey everybody come check this stuff out um i'm well, not... we're also going to have you back on again right to make sure yeah. that we uh <laughs> that we promote it for you so yeah that's our job that's our <laughs> job that's what that's what we actually have a like you as you found out i have a publicist now mm-hmm. who me and james have a publicist who actually goes and finds our bands for us that's, and we'll say I, hey I, we want to go and talk to somebody when your sister emailed me i'm like oh it's so professional <laughs> Oh I my know. goodness. It's like, <laughs> dude, I know Andy. I know James. <laughs> it's, it's so professional. Yeah, see, uh, we are not see messing Joe's, around. See Joe's comment it says Ben is the uh, anti lead singer, lead singer. Yeah. <laughs> That's I'm not a lead singer, but I'm not a lead singer. <laughs> and then we'll, you know, we're going to go hang out tomorrow. So, uh, reviewers table tomorrow with Ben again. Uh, so we'll have us, you'll see me, wonderful me, uh, Ben will be on it. And, but, uh, you know, we'll just be hanging out, talking beard stuff tomorrow. That's just the way it's just like me and James and you will be talking music today. And tomorrow we'll be talking some beard stuff and, you know, opening beard products like he did today on uh, James did on IG. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. But like, this, right, when I said, right when I said, Hey, join us tonight. Like I wouldn't even like, it wasn't even just queued in. It was like, right when, you, right when I said, Hey, Tune in tonight to to uh, Tasty Licks. Like Andy comes popping in. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Hey. <laughs> okay, just in time. That's right. Just to see, you know, we have so much fun on this show. So, and I think that we've kind of stepped it up a notch. So I think that we're excited That's to good. have nothing but music because be, I mean, metal and then I have my background. Yeah. So that's the reason why I changed it to rock and because music Absolutely. is so important to both it's, of us. So just trying to say, I've, I've known you, you know, and I, I've tried not to, your name, <laughs> I know every, you know, it's, it's, it's a term of endearment, but oh, crack, crack, crack. It's like, dude, your name's Andy, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> but then, you know, bearded practitioner, I know you as that. And it's like, like bearded, me- bearded rocking practitioner. All right, I got it. I got it. I can say it. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. I was like, should I just be the rocking practitioner without the beard? And they're like, no, because then you have to have the bearded because you're still saying I'm still part of the bearded game. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. Just, even though I trim this bad boy down, but you know, I do that occasionally. I'll just trim it down and then I'll try to grow it out I, again I, until I get bitched at. My, I got uh, my wife, uh, that I was like, you didn't even notice I trimmed my beard. And she was just like, oh, I, I couldn't see you yesterday. It's been two days, Debbie, and you haven't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you this, that here's how it goes. I go and trim the beard, and then I get all the compliments throughout the house. Yeah. Wow, that looks so good. Like, hey, don't grow the beard out again, Yeah, <laughs> Dad. You look really horrible with the beard, Dad. My no, my kids actually they they are like I can't remember really what you look like with it. You know, like they see the pictures and everything, but they they can't when looking at me they can't see me without a beard. They're like, don't ever take it off. I'm like, got it. I'm on it. <laughs> yeah, you look, you know, you and James look really good with long beards. I don't think I do, and yeah. I would say that ninety five percent of my family would say that I don't. Right. <laughs> I think the only percent was me saying, yeah, I should rock that long beard. (laughs) But uh, anyway, uh, I've had so much fun today, man. This has been a really fun. We got to listen to some music. James, what do you have to say, buddy? What do you, what do you think? Nothing, man. I've I've enjoyed, uh, I love doing these live streams. I wish I could do more uh, aside from, you know, have to work, you know, that work, dreaded work that we have to do. So I mean, if I didn't have to do that, I would actually be on live streams more. Right. Um, yeah, so I just, I enjoy doing them. I enjoy, yeah. So well, if I had to work day, weekends, I definitely would be a lot more. 
Yeah. Exactly. One day, my friends, we are going to be looking back in the next two to three years. Me and James will be somewhere sitting on, you know, stardom, hopefully. Or at least in viewing <laughs> so many stars. We'll have like, we'll be like, hey, do you remember that time that we had like the lead singer from that band on? And it was like, we were the first premiere. This thing will blow up on us, Ben. The, uh, people are going to come are. view this years later. And we're going to be saying, we told you this guy was that good. <laughs> I was I was telling my, my bandmates, that, uh, you know, yesterday at practice, like, you know, I, I don't know how many people would be in the chat. And that doesn't even matter. But this this exists throughout history. This is now going to be on YouTube. I said people can yep. come along and, and be like, oh, you know, hey, it, say if we, you know, a song does everything happens and then they're like a song gets picked up for some odd reason. I have no preconceived notions. I, if it happens awesome if it doesn't happen awesome as well i'm having a blast making music with my friends regardless awesome. of anything happening would it be cool sure you know <laughs> no pressure i gotta I hate that you know and, and it's love it it can ruin ruin things if you put too much pressure on yourself just have fun enjoy it you know if it comes it comes you know right. <laughs> Very, very Buddhist of you, sir. Very yeah. Buddhist of you. Accept, <laughs> accept it as it is. Accept it yep. as it is. Yep. Very much so. Well, guys, uh, thank you guys, everybody, for jump, jumping on in and listening and uh, being part of this show. Uh, thank you to your bandmates for joining in and you oh, yeah. know, being part yeah. of the show as well. I totally appreciate Gene, the support. I'm going to get tax afterwards like, hey, jackass, what would you say that for? <laughs> <laughs> hey my name my name sean is just normal Gene. damn it yeah. <laughs> it's not everybody Gene, call sean. Me Gene. yeah <laughs> <everybody's> <laughs> <calling me Gene. laughs> but we had a blast man it was really good to have you on uh we'll definitely have you on again as you uh you know next time you will hopefully see you you'll have a new ep out and we'll be enjoying talking about the new EP. Maybe we can get some of those band members that were in the crowd today yeah. to maybe be part of the show yeah. as well. To kind of we might be able to. Uh, that's we'll we'll see. I don't. You know, they like I said, it's not that they aren't online. It's that they don't. You know, typically do this type of stuff. So I didn't want to. You know, make it weird for them or anything. Be like, hey, you got to be on the live stream with me. So with you know, now that no they've seen me and be like, oh, it's it's pretty chill. You just get to talk totally and. Uh, be all right. So maybe next time I can, I can convince one or more of them to uh, join us. Well, I'll have my people talk to your people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have, we have professional emails now. They yes. Very professional. Asked. I was like, Ooh. Yeah. I know. <laughs> That's like when you were talking like, Hey, my wife knows me as just well, husband. Yeah. That my sister knows me just as Andy, and I'm it's, always knowing her as like you know. just my sister. And then when I see that email, I'm like, "Holy moly! Yeah, we're like we're well, we're we're like something." She hears me say some of the accolades I'm getting from my bearded friends on this and that. And she's just like, "Yeah, but you're Ben. I mean, you you pick your nose." Right. I'm like, "I know. That's why." I'm <laughs> <laughs> There's always that's what keeps you humble. I think that the women in our lives keep us humble. Let us yeah. know that uh, you know, or family members. They're always yep. like, "You remember when you like crapped your pants when yeah. you were like four? Yeah, yeah. I remember that. You have holes in your socks, dude. Too. You know, like, ooh, look at you. I'm big you rock star so with holes in my socks." <laughs> <laughs> exactly like I, I, i'm like hey look i'm doing all these cool things and she's like yeah you snore a lot yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't see you with your cpap machine on do they yeah, now yeah. mr <laughs> mr i got our show yep. <laughs> cool man well we'll talk to you soon everybody else okay. out there we had a blast it was really great seeing you any last words james no, that's yeah, been a blast. I enjoy. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. Cool. Yeah, and thanks for coming. Thanks for being our guest. Cool, cool. Yeah, no thank you so much. And well, next week we have another band on, and we'll just keep tuned for who the band is, and uh, we will see you and rock you later. If I can find the exit out of here. <laughs> <laughs>